One of the toughest challenges to overcome when mixing music is called frequency masking. When certain sounds sharing a similar frequency content are basically competing with each other, resulting in a lack of clarity and definition for both sounds. For example, bass guitar and bass drums, guitars and vocals. And Smart EQ4 by Sonable just addressed that issue in a way that will revolutionize modern mixing. So let's dive right into it. In this video, I'll do a walkthrough of all the cool features of Smart EQ4, and then we'll put the plugin to the test in a real mixing context. A lot of people know Sonable for its line of AI-driven plugin like Smart Comp, Smart Limit, Smart Reverb, but this Smart EQ plugin is probably my favorite of all of them. There are so many features in this plugin to really help you with mixing. And for beginners, it's one of the best plugins out there to give you insights to help you understand how to balance your mix better. Because with all the analyzer tools, not only it can fix your mix, but it can give you information on what you should do. There are two main ways to using this plugin. The first one, more simple, would be to load it on your master bus and let it do its magic. So how does it work? Sonable took a thousand songs in each genre, acoustic, classical, electronic, and so on, and it basically compiled all the information to try to create what the balance profile would be for the specific genre. So in this case, I loaded Metal Heavy as profile, then you click Learn and you let the plugin do its analysis. Once that's done, it's going to give you a certain frequency curve that you can use to tweak your mix for a more balanced sound according to how it perceives the frequency content. The second and most amazing way to use this plugin would be to load it on each sub bus. For example, drums, bass, guitars, vocals, samplers, and so on. And that way, you're really going to get the most bang for your buck. Why? It's because each instance of the plugin is able to speak to each other and make corrections basically to unmask sounds, bring clarity, punch, and definition. So let's check out here all the features. So once it is loaded, you're going to have to decide in which category or hierarchy you're going to put your sub bus. For example, here we have samplers, which should be in the background in this song. Then you have bass, drums, guitars, and vocals, which should be in front. So here we have a sub menu with two different buses at a time. For example, we have here drums and vocals. And from here, you can control the instance. You don't have to click each and every time to change here and open the other one. You can simply access it from here and make changes as you want. And the second window would be here in close view where you see everything working at the same time. So here we have an analyzer working and with each color represent each instrument. So here you see big bumps of blue, purple and also pink showing you that there is competition going on between the instrument buses. The plugin works according to three different modes. First one is track, which is going to address only the imbalances in the track itself. Then you have group, which is going to only affect the masking between tracks. And then the third way is track plus group, meaning it's going to fix spectral imbalances in each track and also the way that it's working with each other track. So that's the default mode. That's what we're going to choose for now. So let's look at here guitars. We have here Hertz, which is basically the center of your frequency curve that's addressing all the spectral imbalances. So you can move this left and right. You can also reduce or increase the width of it. And then here the smoothing is basically how surgical you want your curve. So if you put smoothing at 100%, it's going to be pretty, pretty round. And if you put it at zero, it's going to be very bumpy here. And then adaptative, this is basically how dynamic you want your EQ to work. The higher it is, the more it's going to change according to what it's fed. So it's important to know that after you load the plugin on each track, the only thing you need to do is click once here on learn all. After that, you're going to assign a profile. For example, here it's vocals. So we're going to choose vocals, vocals high, vocals low, and it's going to change the frequency curve according to the option that you choose here. Drums, it could be the full drum kit or it can be only one piece of the kit. Guitars, in this case, is electric guitar. Bass, and then samplers. In this case, it's a bass synth. 
and here is your main button that controls the whole plugin. So let's look at the plugin in action. So right now the only thing I did was to load the plugin on each track, click learn all and make sure to assign the right profile to each instrument. So let's just play the track without the plugin activated and you're gonna see the effect on how it balances the mix. It's pretty incredible. So the processing, I dropped a little bit the impact on some of the buses because I felt it was a bit too strong, but in general, it's basically default settings. So let's start with the plugin disengage and I will engage it as it's playing. So it's pretty clear what it's doing to the low end. It really brought out a lot more punch. It controlled a little bit more the snare transients. And in general, there's a better sense of clarity and separation with the instruments. So that really helped. So let's listen to vocals here. It's very important to know that depending on where you position the bus, it's going to really change the way it's being processed. So for example, if you put vocals in the background, it's going to be very different than if you put it in the front. So we'll try it. Let's start with the plugin deactivated. And let's listen to it and I will change the position in the hierarchy, front, middle and back and you will see the difference. really impressive in how it's changing where uh, the instrument or in this case the vocals sit it really changes the balance in a good way so it gives you such a, an incredible control and in how you want to prioritize things depending on what type of music you're working on so in this case it's working perfectly in the front like this a really good way for example to work with that would be to have power chords with heavy guitars that you could put in the back and then when it's more of a riff type of part, you would drop it in the middle here. So depending on the genre of music you're mixing, this part of the plugin here on the left will be very important because not all musical genres are putting the vocals in front. For example, dark techno music like Suicide Commando, Osiko and all these goth underground bands, they always put the vocals in the background. It's really the beats that are up front. So that really would change your approach and how you're using the plugin. So let's dive into the more advanced features of the plugin. So we're gonna close here the multi-view and go in depth in just the treatment of one instrument. So let's see drums here. We're gonna start here and we're gonna check the different features. So first, if for example, you see that your drums are a little bit too harsh with the processing, yes, you can decrease uh, you can decrease the impact here, which is gonna affect drums, for example, a bit less, or you can restrict the width of the plugin. But another cool way to do it is to split the frequency spectrum in two bands. For example, you click the plus here and then you have separate control over the higher frequency spectrum so you can only reduce this part and keep that one intact so that's a really really cool feature and one other feature that you can do is simply double click and you can add basically a band just as you're used to with your normal eqs so you can adjust you can customize the curve here not only that you can also make it dynamic so for example it can go dynamic in the negative or positive depending on how you want to adjust it so that's very very cool so let's listen to it with the plugin bypass here
you can see how more balanced the bus sounds now. I split the band in two and I decided to adjust the frequency content a bit more on the higher frequency spectrum. So now that we did a quick balance of the drums, let's check out all the other buses and we'll try to establish a full mix together. So let's go with the bass here. So the biggest differences that I could see is we have a rounder, fuller low end. Also, we have a little bit of a clearer sound uh, in terms of cymbals. The cymbals are definitely a bit sharper and we have basically a better control over snare transient and everything sounds just a little bit more together. And you know, mixing, it's about little details like this. If the adjustment is too big, that means there's a problem in the mix at the start. So that tells you to go and reassess your decisions. So the differences should be light, but it should still feel like an improvement once the plugin's activated. So here's my quick walkthrough of the plugin. I hope that you found that helpful. The best way to know is to really try it for yourself and apply it to your musical content and you're gonna see how incredible the results are in such a short amount of time. I hope that you like the content. If you did, please click like, subscribe and share and hit that notification bell. See you again very soon. <laughs>